What's up guys, Wyatt Dirt, the Not So Earth, and today we're going to be doing another spray paint tutorial. Today we're going to be doing something different. Uh, like I said in previous videos, we're going to do something with the peel and stick stencils, and we're going to do something with the Mylar sheet stencils. Today we are going to be using the Mylar sheets. This is going to be the uh, Wrath Camo. This comes from Red Leg Stencils. And it's mostly a hexagon, octagon type pattern. Uh, this is going to be the first stencil that we use. And this is going to be the second one that we use. So, now these stencils are pretty expensive and they are big. Uh, they're made for painting a boat. I'm not too sure if they have smaller stencils. This is just the one I ordered. I'll throw up a picture of an ice chest that I did. I uh, bought this for doing a 120 quart K2 ice chest. And I'm going to be using different colors today because honestly, the spray paint that I bought from Red Leg was extremely overpriced. I wouldn't even pay $2 for each can. Um, extremely inconsistent. Um, I've had two of the same colors that came out different once they were sprayed. Um, some of the cans just not working straight out the box, no matter what I did. Clean the tips, change the tips. Um, having some just splatter paint everywhere. So I wouldn't recommend buying their spray paint. I'd recommend you taking the colors that you want, spray paint that you already know, know how it sprays, spray paint brand that you trust, and use it like that, which is what I'm going to be doing today. So I'm going to show you all how to do it with these type of stencils. Also, uh, I'm going to go in and if you want to make your own peel and stick, I'm going to show you all how you all can do that without having to buy these. So I'm going to throw in a picture of the ice chest that I did. So y'all can see what the pattern looks like. And then we're gonna go ahead and move on to, I'm gonna do the stock, uh, the Magpul X22, I believe it's called, uh, 1022 takedown stock. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna, uh, as you can see, this has been stripped. This is previously painted. Um, hope y'all really enjoy this tutorial because I really like the paint job that was on here. Uh, before I stripped it but I needed something to paint I figured this would be this would look good with this so this is just my trapping gun I trap raccoons possum stuff like that and this is just what I use I take it down put it in a little book sack that I came in and that's how I travel it around but anyways we'll go ahead with our first color when you do strip this I use citrus strip uh, I make sure to get all the citrus strip off from the inside. I took this internal block out and made sure all the citrus strip was out of the uh, end block panels. Undid all the screws here, make sure I got all the citrus strip, the citrus strip out of there because you don't want that citrus strip to bleed through and all the fresh paint you put on there. By the time you go to use it for the first time, you got paint completely flaking off. So I'm gonna go ahead and the first color that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to where this is all an even color. I'm going to go ahead with my rust over in black. The very first color I use for it is going to be the base color. And what this is going to do, like I said, this is going to give us an even color to work with. I'm going to go looking a little heavy with these coats, but what this is going to do, our hexagons will not be black. This is going to be the outline of the hexagons that will end up coming out black. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. When that dries, I'm going to flip it over and do it. So I'm going to get all the first black done. And then we'll go on for the next step from there. Okay, so for the, uh, for the ones that are going to be end up making their own stencils, you can do it one of two ways. You can either do it the peel and stick method, or you can do it the... Uh, place and spray method like I'm doing now if you want to do the place and spray method uh, or either one um, One good thing to do Go on the internet. Just look up some uh, Octagon patterns. You'll be able to find this, you know, beehive, whatever uh, Print it out um, kind of size it up the way you want And just get it if you're gonna be uh, If you give me an ink and peel and stick I recommend uh, the painters tape go ahead and when you get it, cut out the octagons. Um, make sure there's some contrast in them to where you get the black. 
you're gonna do a peel and stick. Come here, take the take the piece of paper down, draw everything out, kind of get it to where they're all in line. And when you go ahead, and when you're gonna cut them, you're gonna cut out all the octagons. This is gonna be the hard part because of uh, like the way they do it when they Cerakote, Duracote, anything like that. Basically, your stencil is gonna be just a whole bunch of these really small lines right here and you're going to take that and place that onto whatever you're painting so it can be a real pain in the ass if you want uh the peel and stick stencils uh you can there's people on you know etsy that make them uh that'd be relatively cheap now if you wanted to make your own place and spray i recommend uh going to hobby lobby if you have one around um there are some uh, art notebooks that have a little bit thicker paper that's not quite cardboard. It's kind of in between paper and cardboard. It's a little bit thicker. Go ahead and do the same thing. Cut out the octagons that you printed out. Uh, trace them onto a piece of paper, um, whatever you may be using. Or if you get some Mylar sheets, uh, go ahead and do it on that. And just cut them out and you'll be essentially making one like this. Okay guys, so we went ahead and let our base color dry. We're we'll gonna go on to the next step, which is gonna be doing our octagons. Now, if you run the stencil, you can see with like this, it's big enough to, to where I can do it in one go, which is what I'm gonna do. Now, what I like about this Magpul stock is there's a lot of, it's not a whole lot of curves to it. It's a lot of, there are curves, but it's more sharp lines. Um, it's not a real extremely rounded. So it makes it a little bit easier to paint. So if we take a look at it, you can be able to see that the outside edges of the octagons are what's gonna be black, not the actual octagons themselves. So I'm going for a woodland type pattern, uh, woodland type colors. So I'm gonna be using you know blacks and greens and tans and browns. So for this, I want the octagons to be green. So I'm gonna add some gradients in there. It's gonna be dark green and light green so for the dark green i got my special sauce sorry guys i can't disclose that to y'all because i don't want my supply to dry up being a discontinued and there's all in one place to get it and then iron lac guacamole now one thing you you could do is if you wanted to you can this is more of a darker green the krylon uh, i'm not sure the exact color on this one but this Krylon will be a dark green. And then uh, there's a Krylon light woodland, which is a really light green too. But anyway, we're gonna go on to this step. So like I said, we're gonna add gradients. Now, if you're running something like this and you wanna get those hexagons tighter, all you do is add some weight to them. So we'll go ahead and add some weight and that's gonna make the octagon sit a little bit flatter where do you get a little bit sharper lines on them I'm just using a bunch of different spray cans that I got sitting around some of these colors I'll be using some of them I won't kind of get those out the way so I can get some good paint down all right so like I said dark and light so kind of just however Add some dark, add some light, come out with some dark. Kind of do it in lines, do it at angles. You want to, you know, say round it off to where some of the octagons will be multicolored. That's cool too. Now you're just gonna do one coat on this. You're not really gonna be able to, uh, if you want, you can leave it like this if you're running something like this. Now, if you're just taking it and holding it down, paint somewhere, then I might have some wind, or something like that. So you're doing it outside. Um, probably if you're holding it down like this, you can have a, uh, go ahead and do multiple, multiple coats on it. You want 
to go ahead and try to come around and get the edges on it too also I'm coming on the back side make sure I get that riser part I'm hoping I'm not getting in y'all way so y'all can see this good and on the grip cheap riser all right so that's gonna be that part I'm gonna let that dry uh, Actually, no, I'm going to hurry up and pull that off before these stencils actually dry to the paint. Pull these off. You can be able to see what I'm talking about with those gradients. You'll be able to see those real good. Yeah, see? Now you got the black hex outlines. And you got your two different colors going in there. It looks really good. I like that. So we're going to let this dry. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. And then we're going to go on to the uh, hexagons. Okay, so another quick tip I'm going to give y'all before y'all uh, go ahead and do this. Now, once this is dry and you get this picked up, all the overspray dust that you get from under here, wipe that off. As you can see, all that overspray, dry spray dust, wipe that out of the way to where when you flip it over, you don't get that all over the uh, product that you're working on. Okay, guys, so next, we got this all dried out. This is ready to go. We're going to go ahead and add our hexagons to it. Now, I should have said this in the beginning. I forgot. I wasn't paying attention. If you're going to be doing the peel and stick, making your own stencils, the peel and stick, not a painter's tape, you're going to want to do these hexagons first. The reason being, if you do this first and then you're going to put those, the hexagon stencils on there, when you spray your, uh, your gradients of your different colors for the hexagons, you're going to have a whole bunch of overspray on here. It's going to look like shit. So I apologize. I should have said that in the beginning. You're going to have to do your gradients, hexagon, stencils. Then come back, say you want to do the black outlines, the whole thing black. Then add your octagons like you would with the uh, if you were doing the mesh bag method. And then spray your two different colors. So like I said, I apologize. If anybody needs some clarification on that, I might be I might be doing a video. I might do a video on that later. But anyways. So looking at this, I have this spot right here where the stencils didn't quite sit flat enough. And the brown, uh, the OD green, the dark OD green, blended in with the black. So I can take that and cover that up. So I'm going to go ahead and look on my stencils and find, a, find one that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and do that one right there okay so actually I'm gonna go ahead and do this section here in that area now a little tip get you another piece of cardboard and when you can do it if you want to really spread these out and only do these in certain areas what you can do is take the cardboard and block off to where the paint doesn't get into all these other areas so I don't want a bunch of overspray right here Take this, set this down. I'm just gonna be painting this area right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually move more of it into there. To where it kind of comes from here into there. And what I might actually do is just this little strip right here and cover that up right there. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use a dark and a light brown. Like I guess I'm gonna do my gradients in there. I'm going to do the same thing as like what I did with this. Adding the different colors. I'm actually just going to go ahead and do this whole section to where y'all can really see the, uh, the light and dark colors. I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is spraying good. And what this cardboard will also do, it'll also help you get the stencils really tight to the uh, to whatever you're painting. Now that was uh, Rust-Oleum, uh, that brown, I guess I'm going to be using the ProDrive brown. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you've seen these. Go ahead and add that gradient right there. Now I'm going to come in with a third color. I'm going to come in with a tan. This is going to be the Krylon khaki, I believe. Yep, camouflage khaki. So come in and what I do, now that i got this cardboard, I can block off that right there if I don't want that painted. 
let a little bit of it go in there. And I'm gonna let a little bit of it go in there. And that's gonna kinda, depending on the colors you use, that can actually kinda change the color a little bit. Like when I painted my ice chest, I had a, uh, a tan color and a, a lighter black, and it actually turned it a bluish color. So I'm gonna pull this off. Oh yeah, that looks good. So and you're just gonna repeat the process across the whole thing. If you want them real close together, you can add them real close together. And you can take them and turn them different ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and just finish off the rest of it and then we're gonna see what we're dealing with at the end. All right guys, so I got my 1022 back, put back together. I know in the beginning I said I was trying to go for a woodland, like a woodland color type. It ended up coming more, coming out more multicam tropic. But you know what? I'm not mad at it. I really like that, you know. You can see how we got some color gradients between the tan, goes in a light brown and then tan, and uh, goes in a dark brown. You can see how it kind of changed the color a little bit on that one particular scale right there. Did end up adding some Krylon light woodland. Uh, that's where that really bright green right there comes in. But I said, I'm still happy with it. So if you were to do this, I would recommend doing it the way I did it with the place and spray stencils that make your life a whole lot easier. But you know, if you want to do it the hard way, um, go ahead and do the, the peel and stick. Uh, now I'll probably do a video showing y'all how to do it the peel and stick method, but something a little bit smaller because something like this, like a 1022 stock, that would, that would take a good while hand cutting stencils unless you got access to like a cricket machine or something similar to that. So if you're on Facebook, go check out uh, That's Cool and I Spray Paint It. I'm not affiliated with the group other than I'm just a member of it. You know, go show off your paint jobs, get some inspiration for it. And, you know, kind of, there are some guys with a lot of good information in there too. And so I um, want to thank everybody. Uh, I got some more videos coming on the way. Uh, the next couple ones are going to be more using stencils like that. I've got, got, got a couple different patterns that I can get hold of. So, appreciate it, guys. Thank you all until the next video. See you all later.